So last time we talked about how this doesn't fit in there with that and those and all sorts of stuff like that. Today, some of the products I needed to make it fit are in. Let's unbox them. So I've got the whole new oil pan set up here. This is like the Holly, it might even be the knockoff Holly, like 302-2 set up. I got everything that comes with the kit, the pan, uh, this thing on my bobber. Um, looks like all the hardware, pickup tube, and this I ordered separately because I had to do the actual OEM dipstick and dipstick tube, uh, and then the new gasket. So I'm curious what this oil pan looks like compared to the old one. So I'm gonna put it up here on the table and see just what it looks like and see what kind of differences we're gonna get clearance wise. Oh, right away I can tell, look at that difference right there. We have like two inch, two inch difference there. All right, an inch and a quarter difference. Sometimes you think things are longer than what they are. Flipped over on the other side. Let's point out some differences. This one has kind of like the steep straight down and then kind of curve. This one has a couple steps. This one being over an inch lower than this one. So you drain the oil on the back on the, the Corvette or whatever pan this is. But on this one, it is missing. Oh, right here. It is right there. There's your oil drain. I don't know why the plug's not in there. Oil filter housing looks to be in the same spot. I don't know if I need to reuse this or I have that one. I didn't realize oil pans were so complicated. Like, why are there so many parts? It's just a pan. So I'm gonna start assembling the new one. So if you look here, I already have the old oil pan off. I have the old pickup tube out. The windage tray is still here. I'm hoping this will work. I'm not, I'm still not sure. I know if you were to take this and set it here now. Huh. Will that work? Let me see. Okay, that might be what they're talking about. It's hitting right here. As I rotate this up and in, it can't seat the whole way. Because it's hitting right there. Now, as you can see, I have my pan on, but it's not sitting flush. Fits fine in the back. That's because the front hits due to the, actually you can see small mark there. That's one of the spots that it hits on here. So I have to measure 14 and a quarter inches up and cut that.
get to use my never before used electric torque wrench. Never had an electric one. I don't think it beeps at you or anything. I still think it makes the, the click, but you can see your adjustment there. So we're gonna crank, we're gonna do 18 foot pounds here. with new O-ring. These get 10 foot-pounds. I'm going to rotate back and forth though to make sure that's seated flush and that O-ring goes in there the whole way. Because I definitely want my oil pump to get oil from the pan. The last nut on here all right, they're all assembled. You can see the clearance there. It is close, but it does fit. It's all tight. This, you just want to look in there and make sure that that's all nice and flush as well, which it is. It's hard to see on the other side. My finger in there. Can't really fit. There it is. Yep, yep, that's flush. Let's try out the oil pan. Of course, I still have to put the baffle in, but. Oh yes. There it is. Progress being made. Next up, throw this baffle in, which fits. Uh, like that. Sure, looks good. And they come with four of these bolts. Get a little. Dab of Loctite on there, 10 foot-pounds. And with any luck, this will fit on there with no issue. Test fit. That's even with the block. Okay, that all looks good. Good news, good news. Install the supplied oil passage cover. Is that this? This thing. I am no engine builder, by the way. I'm just going at the seat of my pants here. Just doing my thing. New gasket. Before I forget, I gotta rotate the engine just to make sure that nothing's interfering. Not that I changed much, but just in case. Better do it now than when I start the engine and things start falling apart. ARP bolt, by the way. I don't know if I have a 12 point that big. Ooh, it's way too big. Too small. Too small. Too small. Too big. Well, damn. Oh, I can almost spin it by hand. Ah, yeah, that's kind of loose. Yes, all is well. Ho, ho, ho. Spark plugs are still in, so I guess we're going to have some compression. That's okay. All good. No rubbish. We have a little bit of gasket, old gasket to remove. Little bit of leftover gasket here. Not much, just a tiny bit. And I know far too well. Yeah. I feel like I am locked inside of all these cages. I'm chained in, be changing. Feels like yeah. I'm in cost. Take some degreaser. I'm chained in. I'm trapped inside the ghetto with the surfaces. Echo. 38 specials kill potential. Never felt safe after school on my way home. Better protect your neck cause it's essential Better see ten toes down doing daily Just dances with the devil Just a little gasket maker the surface, lies at the corners the of the block Nothing be crazy Talking to myself again, I uh, to How to get this gasket to stay Cause the OEM one, it's actually riveted This might be a little more difficult Putting a couple bolts through should do the trick Cause they actually sit there and stay pretty nicely about life so that it never will be feature out the project in these streets always been my greatest teacher break them chains off your brain for your mind through speak i feel like i am locked inside of all these cages i'm changing be changing feels like i'm incarcerated i'm changing i feel like i am yeah 
for the bolt there. Now we go around at 18 foot pounds, starting to set. That's that. Now this oil filter adapter, I still need to torque. It just doesn't get any kind of gasket or anything. It just sits on there. Sure, sure, why not? 40 foot pound. The only thing that I found odd was there's no, ah, there's a difference. OEM one doesn't have a spot there for a bolt. That's why I was wondering why that was like that. Interesting, they made that design choice. Spin this boy back up. Maybe put the dipstick in. Might as well. If I can. Oh boy. He eat. Yes. That appears to be the hole for the dipstick. So let's uh, shove the dipstick in there. Didn't read instructions for this, so I'm just gonna shove it and I don't know, hope for the best. I guess that's kinda in the way for the header, huh? My headers don't fit anyway. This isn't the permanent bolt, I just I just don't want this hanging because I'll end up whacking it on something and bending it or breaking it. So that's how that goes. Oh yeah. Cool. Solid progress tonight. Of course, you know, you think about it, it's just an oil pan, but it always takes way longer than you think it'll take. Luckily that's all done. No more cutting and making sure all that fits when it originally didn't. But anyway, that's done. It's a new day and I have new parts. And I mean, is there anything really better than unboxing new parts? I mean, that's half, that's half the fun of the whole build. Two things, maybe three things in here. Three things, at least. Goodness, there's a lot of tape on there. Is a big boy. So what we have here is a 102 millimeter throttle body for the LS1. We have a three to four bolt adapter because the intake manifold on that is a three bolt. Eventually I'll probably do a four bolt. The, and then it comes with the electronics as well, which is nice. Hopefully they uh, are decent quality and won't throw any codes or do anything weird like that. And then of course all the hardware. This stuff is from eBay, you know I get a bunch of stuff there. These have really good reviews actually and at the end of the day it's a throttle body. Well, There's not a whole lot you could screw up about this. <laughs> but my goodness, look at, I didn't realize how big that was. 102 millimeters, that's like the size of my face thing is huge. So here, I have the, the Wee-end, Y-end, whatever, intake manifold. So it's a three bolt, so I needed the adapter. And what's nice about this kit, the one that I got, it's a, it's a four bolt throttle body, but it has the three to four bolt adapter plate with it. And all this stuff, there's like a hundred bucks, like pretty good deal. And I'll link that in the description box like I do with everything else. So let me get this put on there and we'll be that much closer to having the engine block ready to put in and run. Now what's odd is there's no gasket that goes behind this plate, but there's a gasket that attaches the plate to the throttle body. Whoa, 
up, boys? We're that much closer. That much closer to having this all done. I'm still waiting on the new engine mounts. They're not here yet. I need them. I got to see if I'm going to use the old headers with those new mounts. I still don't know if they're going to fit or if I'm just going to go OBX. I don't know yet. A couple other little sensors I'll need. I need a couple things uh, back here. And then I need all of the accessories in the front of the engine. I mean, this thing is gorgeous and huge. I don't know, I'm curious, how big is that? How big is 102 millimeters? A little over four inches. So it looks like I'll have a four inch intake for this thing. Should be able to breathe pretty well, especially once I eventually get a fast, I wanna get the fast 102 intake to go along with this. All right, boys, that's about where I'm gonna wrap up this video. Oil pan, throttle body, a couple little updates done to the engine. We're getting there, slowly but surely. I'm juggling this and the other projects, so bear with me. More stuff is coming on the way for this. Still gonna do some more work in the engine bay. I need to get this done and sanded and painted because that's actually what I'm least looking forward to. I can't wait to see the result, but I, I am not a body man by any means. So that's definitely gonna take up a lot of time. I've bored them to sleep. So thanks for watching guys. Check out the other videos of the E36 LS swap that's ongoing. This is part four, I think. This is part four. I don't know how many parts will be. It's, I mean, it's gonna take a while. So it'll be done eventually though. See you next time. Update problem. So I had this all bolted together like I showed you guys, but I can't open the throttle. So here I have the adapter plate bolted to the actual throttle body. You hear that? It's hitting it. Right there at the top. And I've actually already ground a good bit of this away. Well, filed it, I should say. So I need to do even more filing to make this fit. It, it, I mean, it comes in a kit. This shouldn't, this shouldn't happen. I think I could see if there was a problem with the intake, but the, these things come together. Right there. You can see, see it's hitting. I've actually ground a good bit away, which wasn't a bad idea because now that I ground it away, it lines up with this better. Before, um, this was not a, a smooth opening. This hung past it. So now we're, now we're bored out a little bit. If, if you want to you want to call it that more power yeah more power sure that's what I'll say soon there's not going to be any material left. Custom board and stroked throttle body. Ayo! We clear. I feel no grinding. Whew, that is close. You see that in there? Look at how close that is. That's ridiculous that I had to do all this work. All right, I'm just gonna put it back on there. You already saw what it looks like on there. This is, this is dumb. This is absolutely ridiculous that I had to do this on a brand new part that's made to work with each other. It's dumb. Anyway, I'll still link this. That way you can see which one not to buy. Till next time. Thanks for sticking around.